So Matt, what's the one feature that keeps you coming back to native apps? Probably offline support. It's, it's that whole thing of you know you're going to be somewhere with flaky network and you just want it to work. Yeah. That's probably it. So offline is probably the one thing that keeps me going back to native apps as well. Now, like, there's a bunch of apps that I need offline support in, like news readers and things like that. But there's probably, I don't know, kids today use a ton of apps that I don't, like dating apps. Back in my day, you had to run through the city with like a megaphone screaming, why does no one want me? You're um, probably doing it wrong. I'm just going to say. Probably, yeah. <laughs> so offline, a user goes to your web page. They probably are going to run into a situation where they have a flaky network. Um, maybe they're on the train. Maybe they're you know, at a conference or in a hotel. Yep. Right? Now, in the past, we've had capabilities like app cache, which weren't really that reliable and sort of a nightmare. Yeah, no one debug. really used it. And there's that classic Jake blog post. App cache is a douchebag. Yeah. Yeah. These days, we're in a slightly better position. Um, we've got new APIs like Service Worker. Now, Service Worker is like a script that's run by your browser in the background. Um, and it opens up a, like the door to lots of new capabilities. Yeah, right? so, there's, so there's push, there's offline support, there's background sync. And there's like a whole host of other features coming down the pipeline. Yeah. But it's like this really nice low-level API that lets you intercept network requests and just take control of what's going on with caching. Yeah, Super so nice. you've got your web page, service worker in the middle before it gets to the network. So we can kind of manipulate and basically outgoing traffic or just keep stuff from going to the network and just return from yeah. like a cache. So the first step um, to getting your app working with Service Worker is to register a Service Worker script yep. um, that allows sort of background functionality uh, without the web page necessarily having to be open. Yep, you're just making the browser aware that this is my special Service Worker JavaScript file. How about we take a look at some code? So the first thing you're always going to want to do is just check whether Service Worker is actually supported. So if Service Worker and Navigator, assuming it is, you then just call navigator.serviceworker.register and you pass in the path of your Service Worker file. And here, we're just using promises, so then in catch to just see whether it worked or not. And that's literally it. And the kind of the important thing to point out here is it's, an, it's a progressive enhancement, right? So if you're in a browser that doesn't support Service Worker, that never gets called. You're just in exactly the same land as you would have been without Service right, Worker. Right, so you get your same non-offline experience without Service Worker. What about what's inside the Service Worker script? So the minute that kicks off, what the browser will do is it will just go and grab your service worker file and then just start running it in the background of the page. Um, so in this case, the first thing you're going to want to do is manage the install event. So in this case, self.addEventListener. So you're just saying, in this service worker, add this event. Um, and you want to open up a cache. So cache is open. You give it some name. Um, that's kind of important, because over time, you're going to add a different version right, or a so different name. Right, so that's your namespace, right? Yep. And once you've got your cache object, you just call cache.addAll. This is a super helpful little method because you literally pass in an array of paths. And everything inside that array, it will just go and fetch from the network and cache. So here you're interacting with the cache API. Yes. Right? So that's different from the HTTP cache. This is a cache that you control. So nothing will get deleted or replaced or added to it unless you explicitly do it. Um, but yeah, so the only real caveat to all of this is in the cache at all, if you add in like some random file that your server like errors out on and returns an error code, that will make the install event fail. If the install event fails, that means the service worker won't install, which means the web page will never use it. It's kind of just a safety mechanism. If something bad happens in the install event, service worker just won't affect your page whatsoever. It will retry, but it won't actually affect the page. So that's the install event. That won't actually give you offline support because what? It's not actually getting used. Nothing's saying use this, use the cache to respond to a network. That's why you've got the fetch event. Ta-da! Now, fetch is using the new fetch API, right? In this example, we are. But the, it's slightly unfortunate, the fact there's the fetch event and then there's the fetch API, because of obviously the name is exactly the same. They are slightly different. So the fetch event will fire. And basically, this will happen whenever a page that's controlled by a service worker makes a request. So for the page itself, images, styles, anything, um, it will run through this event. And here what we're saying is caches.match. This is a super helpful little method that just says, for this request, is there anything in the cache that can actually deal, like respond with it? Um, so here in the following thing, we say, if there is a response, then just return it. Otherwise, return the fetch. So here, that's where the actual fetch API comes in. And this is basically the same as an XHR. So it'll go off to the network, find it, and return it. And then that'll pump it up to the browser. Those two steps alone will then just give you offline support if you cache everything. 
Okay, ahead of time. so once you've got all of this set up and you want to test that your service worker setup is working correctly, you've got to dive into DevTools. Yep. Um, so serve up your app, check that it works, um, go to network throttling and Doink. just toggle offline. Doink. And, and if you refresh, refresh your page. page. And yes, we can do the annoying air horn noise. Um, that doesn't just work like on desktop, right? That should still work on phones as well. So <laughs> it's the best thing ever. Um, but yeah, so now you know it works offline, which is super awesome. And this is kind of super high level. There is a much better place to get all of this information in terms of like stepping through service worker. It also covers some of the caveats as well as the activate step, which we haven't covered. Yeah, if you want to learn more, check out the service worker offline code lab over on Web Fundamentals.